Your faith will make you well. Your faith will promote your business. Your faith will give you breakthroughs. It is your faith that determines. The words we speak show our faith. Believe what your God is saying. Because your God is saying something.
Hallelujah. I welcome you for our lunch, our service. This is our day 11 in this season of prayer and fasting. We've been sharing on how to receive answers to our prayers. We are taking part four this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. As we look at the scriptures, enlighten our eyes of understanding. I pray that, Lord, your word will bear fruit in our lives in Jesus' precious name. Today we are focusing on overcoming doubt. Receiving answers to our prayers involve a number of things, and we have shared two of them. The first one is believing you have received on the basis of God's word, 
that covers your need. That is believing independent of sensual knowledge. Believing independent of what you see or how you feel. Believing what? Believing that you have received. Believing that the matter is settled. Believing that it is done when you pray. Before the manifestation of the answer, you believe it is done. And that believing is on the basis of God's word that covers your need of that challenge. So that's number one thing that is involved in receiving answers to our prayers. Believe. Remember Mark 11, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So believing is receiving and there's no receiving without believing. And the number two thing that is involved in receiving answers to our prayers, which we have already discussed, is listening to your heart. Listening to your heart for what God may be saying to you in answer to your prayer. It's not all the time God does something. Sometimes, depending on the nature of the need, God may ask us to do something. God may instruct us to do something. He may give us some wisdom on how to do something better. So all this, we'll have to listen to our heart to receive the answer to our prayer. And today we are now looking at the third thing that is involved in receiving answers to our prayers, and that is overcome doubt, or overcoming doubt. James chapter 1, uh, reading from verse 5 to 8 from the NIV translation. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Verse 6. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. He must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Verse 7, that man, the man who doubts, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. So the doubter is not able to receive anything from the Lord even though the Lord has given. It doesn't mean the doubter is never given. God will always give when we ask correctly, ask according, to the, ask according to his word and ask in the name of Jesus. Ask in agreement with God's word. You, asking correctly means you are asking for what you need in agreement with the word of God. And the word of God there means with what God has already made available for us as revealed in the gospel. What is already done for us? What's already available for us? And we ask in the name of Jesus. That means we are not asking according to our own merit. We don't come before God just saying, because I've done this, done that, then you should do this for me. We come on the merit of Christ Jesus, our Lord. So the doubter, even though he may ask correctly, but if he doubts, he is not able to receive what God has given let not that man think he will receive anything from the Lord. Not just wisdom only. In this instance, we are being told about if you lack wisdom, if you need wisdom from God, it could be something else. But as long as there is doubt, there is no receiving. So the doubter is not able to receive anything from the Lord. Look at Matthew 21 and verse 22 from the New Living Translation. You can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you receive. So it is when you, you ask in faith, you receive. But faith works when there is zero doubt. You, you can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. But we know from other scriptures that faith works when there is no doubting. You say, ask in faith. James 1.6, ask in faith. You must ask in faith. If you look at verse 21 of that same uh, Matthew 21, I'll tell you the truth, if you have faith and don't doubt, so you can have faith and doubt. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. There must be no doubt to receive from the Lord. So we must overcome doubt. We must of necessity overcome doubt. In Mark 11, 23, 
from the King James uh, translation, Mark chapter 11, verse 23. I read that from the New King James translation. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever, shall, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. He will have as long as he does not doubt. So it's not just the praying. It is no doubt. There must be no doubt. Doubt will hinder us from receiving what we have asked for. So that's why we must overcome doubt as a requirement for receiving what God has already done. Now, doubt will always come when we give undue attention mentally to facts that are contrary to the word of God. Doubt will always come if we give mental attention, if we focus our minds, our thoughts on facts around our need, facts around the challenge, facts around the case that are contrary to the word of God we have received or the word of God, which is the basis for which we believe we have received, then doubt will definitely come. If we consider facts that are telling us it can't work, it's not possible. There is always a bad report around issues that tell you it can't work, it's not possible. If we consider those facts in our minds, if we focus our thoughts on them long enough, we are going to have doubt come into us. We're going to doubt. And when you doubt, you're not able to receive. Doubt will come when we focus on the challenge, on the need, instead of the word of God. Yes, you have a need, but when you pray, you have handed over that need to God. Now don't focus on the need again. Focus on God's word that covers the need. Or focus on God's promise to meet the need. So doubt will always come when we focus our thoughts on the need, on the challenge, instead of focusing them on the word of God. Therefore, to overcome doubt, you must meditate. That is, focus your thoughts on God's word that covers your need, on God's promise to meet your need, on the revelation from the gospel of what Christ has already done, or what God has made available for you and me. You meditate on the word of God that covers your need. You will overcome doubt. When your mind is occupied with thoughts of what God has done already in relation to your need, or what Christ has already done, or what God has made available in relation to your need, there will be no doubt whether you can receive it or not. You will never doubt what you already believe you have on the basis of God's word. Now let's look at an example in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 13 to 18 in the New Living Translation. We take an example, Luke chapter 1. This is the account of Zechariah, who was a priest, and his wife Elizabeth was barren, and now they were aged and didn't have a child, but they had prayed about the need for a child. Now, but the angel said, the angel Gabriel that paid him a visit while he was ministering in the temple. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Now let me assure you, if you are born again, God has heard your prayers this far. And God will still hear your prayers as you continue praying. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you, will, you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness. A lot of other things were spoken about that child, but I would like to go to verse 18 to see how Zechariah responded. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I am an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Now, look at this account. God has had the prayer of Zechariah, and he has already settled the case. He has answered the prayer. Now he has sent an angel to pass the message to Zechariah. The angel Gabriel was simply to pass a message. What is the message? God has had your prayer and God has settled your case. Your wife, Elizabeth, will conceive. 
He says, she will give you a son, and you will call his name John. So God has settled the case already. But they, of course, before the manifestation, that's what I would like you to understand today, that when you pray and God hears, God will hear when you pray, he settles your case. He settles your case. Praise the Lord. Now the angel is telling him, this day, the, I'm coming from the Lord, God has heard your prayer, and your case is settled. Your wife will give you a son, and you will call him John. You will call him John. But Zechariah doubted that good news given to him from God through the angel. He doubted. He says, how can I be sure this will happen? I am not sure this can happen. I doubt this. I doubt what you are saying. He did not receive the report. Now the report is the answer to his prayer. How do you receive answer to your prayer? You must receive the good news from God. This was good news. We see later, the angel said, I brought you this good news. This report was the good news that was an answer to his prayer, but he doubted it. Zechariah had a challenge in receiving the answer to his prayer. And you receive by believing, but he was doubting. You receive by believing the good news that relates to your situation. There is always good news in the Bible concerning your issue. The gospel is good news of what God has done for us through Christ. There is always good news concerning your case that you are to be aware of and believe it. That's how you receive. You believe to receive. But he was doubting the good news. He was doubting the good news. Because he had bad news. He had bad news on one side. The bad news on concerning Zechariah was the facts concerning his age, the facts about his age. His age was, did not permit him to have a child. About the age of his wife. He did not permit him. So he had those facts. He had a bad report which he had considered. He had believed the bad report. That's why he was doubting the other report. He was too aware of his limitations. That's why he doubted the word from God, which was the answer to his prayer. So Je Zechariah was responding by saying, I am not sure this can happen to me because I am an old man now and my wife also is, long, is, is well along in, in age. She is old also. I am not sure. And in other words, he was asking for any evidence, any proof that this can happen in his circumstances. He was asking for a proof outside God's word. A confirmation outside God's word. That in my condition, this answer from God and my condition, I want to be sure it can happen. The good news from God is the answer to your prayer. No matter how much bad news is around you, once you believe God's good news, the, the answer will be made manifest. The desired miracle will happen. So Zechariah doubted the good news because he had another bad report. That was his age and that of his wife. I don't know what bad reports around your own situation, around that need or challenge, but I can assure you our God is well able to make his word come to pass in our lives as long as we believe. As long as we believe. There are always contrary reports around our needs. There are always things around us that tell us it can't work, it's not possible. We should not consider those ones. Rather, we should consider the good news from God. The good news from God is the answer to your prayer. Now, in the case of Zechariah, an angel came. In our case, we don't need to, an angel to come. We have God's word with us. We have what is revealed in the scriptures concerning our lives, concerning what God has made available, what God has done for us. If we doubt that, then we miss to receive what God has prepared for us. Whose report have you believed concerning your need? You need to ask yourself this question. Concern now, it's okay you are praying. You are praying, you are asking God, God is giving, but whose, what report have you believed concerning that need? Have you believed the good news from God, which is about Jesus and what he has done for us, or have you believed the facts that are contrary to the good news? There are always facts contrary to the good news around your situation, around your need, around your challenge. 
And when you, when you, you consider those, when you meditate on those facts, you, doubt will come. When doubt comes, you will not believe God's report. And God's report is the answer. What the Lord is saying about your situation is the answer. That is the answer. That's why he said, you receive by believing on the basis of God's word to you. On the basis of God's good news to you concerning your situation. That's how you believe you have received. The manifestation of the answer follows the believing. The manifestation of the answer. He said, believe you have received them and they shall be yours. Believe first, then they shall be yours. Now being yours is the thing being made manifest. Because you have believed on the basis of God's word. Praise the Lord. So through the word of God, answers to our prayers are communicated. But facts around our situation can bring doubt if we focus our thoughts on them. Every one of us has situations and there are facts, facts around the situation that may be telling you it's not possible. This cannot work. Even though you are praying, you know, you know this can't work. Zechariah knew he couldn't get a child because he had the facts. But a word comes from God that your wife will give you a son. And all that is required is to believe that word from God. And that's how you receive the answer. Praise the Lord. The answer to our prayers will always be communicated through God's word. And an angel doesn't need to appear because we have the scriptures. An angel does not need to appear. Now in the case of Zechariah, even though an angel appeared, he still doubted. Even though this is an angel, he knew this is an angel. That's why he was afraid. And also, don't be afraid. So Zechariah was saying, how can I be sure this will happen? Because I have facts that tell me it cannot happen. And those facts brought in doubt to him. Now look at what the angel said. Then the angel said, verse 19, the angel said, I am Gabriel, I stand in the very presence of God. It was he, it was he who sent me to bring you this good news. So the answer to his prayer was packaged in good news from God. Good news from God. Even though there is bad news, but there is good news from God that will overcome your bad news. Whatever bad news is around your case, there is good news from God that will prevail over that bad news if you don't doubt. If you don't doubt. Verse 20. But now since you didn't believe what I said, since you have doubted because of your age and the state of your wife's womb and age, because you have not believed. So you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. Now in a way that was to help uh, Zechariah. Because his mouth was shut. He could no longer talk and believe. But at the same time, I believe after, I, after his mouth was shut. After he realized he could not speak based on the word of the angel. He must also have concluded whatever the angel said earlier must be true too must be also correct. If he said I should not speak, I will not speak again, and now I cannot talk, then the issue of my wife having a, a son also is a, a true report that can be believed. But I believe he didn't continue in unbelief. He must have believed the good news from God. After all, the angel said, came to pass, you will not speak, and he couldn't speak again. So focus your thoughts on the word of God, on the good news from God that relates to your situation, you will surely overcome doubt. You will surely receive the manifestation of answers to your prayers. I call you blessed in the name of Jesus. And this week, on this series of how to receive answers to our prayers, this is the fourth day we are receiving answers to our prayers. And I see you receive the manifestation of all of us from the Lord in Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you. May this sharing that has enlightened us bear fruit in our lives for the glory and honor of your holy name in Jesus' precious Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. I welcome you to our prayer time. We'll be taking a prayer, a prayer by which we receive out of the Father's provisions of love for us, his children. Our senior pastor defined prayer as asking and receiving from what the Father has provided for us in Christ. It is asking and receiving out of what God, our Father, has provided for us. And we'll be taking time to receive 
for all our needs at hand, we shall be receiving from the Father's provisions of love. In the book of Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Second Peter 1, 3, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So we see that God has given us all things. He has given us all things. The Father has given us all the things we require in this life that pertain life and that we may live a godly life. He has provided. Also, Psalm 68 verse 19. Psalm 68 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with the benefits the God of our salvation. So God has not just saved us, but he has foreseen all our needs on a daily basis and he daily loads us each day with the benefits, with the blessings we require for that day. So it becomes the right thing to do to receive from the Father's provision at every time and point when we become aware of a need in our lives. We are not calling for God to do something He has already done. We are the ones to receive out of what He has done. Also, Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ. Do you have any need? Then God supplies. Therefore, we can receive. So we shall be praying and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, it gives me great joy to know that you have blessed me with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places and that you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ. Father, you daily load me with benefits such that I do not run short of anything. Today, out of your rich provisions of love for me, I receive every resource I require to meet every need at hand. I receive financial resources to meet my financial needs. I receive material resources to meet my material needs this day. I receive technical resources to meet all my technical needs today. Every help I need from men, I receive it. God will order their steps. He will connect us in a divine way. Every counsel I need and it will come through men. I receive it. God will supernaturally connect us. I refuse to live like an orphan when my father is the king of the whole universe. In the name of Jesus, I call every need in my life, every need in my family, every need in my business, every need in my ministry. I call it supplied in the name of Jesus. Ministering spirits go forth and cause it to be so. Thank you, Father, for it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Let us Lift up our voices and make this prayer. It is a prayer meant out of the consciousness that the Father has already provided. Therefore, for every need I am receiving out of the Father's provisions of love, I am receiving by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, it gives me great joy to know that you have blessed me with every spiritual blessing and and that you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I refuse to be limited to what I have. I refuse to be limited to what I know. I refuse to be limited to what I can do. I am aware I am conscious of my heavenly supplies out of my Father because of his great love for me. The Father has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. And today I equally receive out of his rich provisions because he daily loves me with benefits. He daily loves me with everything I require for that day so that I may live a full life. So that I may live a fulfilled life. So that I may live a significant life. Today in the
the name of Jesus. I receive out of my father's provisions of love to meet every need at hand. I receive out of my father's provisions of love every resource I require, everything I require in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ to live a fulfilled life, to live a significant life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Out of the father's rich provisions of love, I receive every resource I require today to meet every need at hand in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. There is no need which is beyond my father's provisions. If he did not spare his own son, Jesus Christ, but he gave him up for me, with him he also gave me everything I require, freely so that I may enjoy. Therefore this day, I receive financial resources to meet my financial needs in the name of Jesus. I receive money. I receive financial resources in the name of Jesus to meet every financial need in my life, to meet every financial need in my family, to meet every financial need in the ministry, to meet every financial need in my business. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Father I receive every material resource I require this day to meet the material needs in my life, to meet the material needs in my family, to meet the material needs in my business, to meet the material needs. Oh, yes, Lord God. Every material need in my life, I receive out of the Father's provision, the rich provisions of His glory, the rich provisions out of His love. I receive right now in the name of Jesus. I receive every technical resource I require to meet the technical needs in my life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, every human resource I require, every human help I require, thank you, Father, because you have already supplied. You are ordering their steps. They are cunning. We are meeting. We are connecting. I am being helped. I will not run short of anything in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to live like an orphan. I refuse to live in lack. I refuse to live in want. In the name of Jesus, I know that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack of every material resource, every technical resource, every financial resource. The Lord is my shepherd. All need, my needs are met. All my needs are supplied. All my needs are supplied. I have all what I require this day. All what I need this day to live a fulfilled life as a child of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, what I require this day to pursue after my dreams, my visions and the desires the Lord has put in my heart. Oh, I receive. The Father will not give me dreams and not give me the resources to facilitate them. He will not give me desires and not make a way for those desires to be made. He will not give me a vision and not provide all for that vision. Today I receive out of the Father's rich provisions of love. Every resource I require in the name of Jesus, in the pursuit of my dreams, in the pursuit of my desires, in the pursuit of my visions, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, in your pursuit, receive out of the Father's rich provisions of grace. Receive every resource you require for the school fees of your children, the Father has supplied according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. There is no lack. Receive today in the name of Jesus. For that business which is struggling because of financial dryness, receive out of the Father's rich provisions. The Father gave you the business idea. He has also given you the resources to facilitate that idea. Receive it from Him. Receive it from Him this day. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those dreams you have carried and you are not able to execute them for shortage of resources. Today, understand that the Lord has equally provided the resources you require. He then loads you with benefit. He will not give you a dream and not give you the how to carry it out. Whatever you require for that dream to become a reality, receive it out of the Father's provision of love. Is it wisdom? Christ is your wisdom. Is it finances? He supplies all your needs. 
according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. In Christ there is no shortage. There is no scarcity. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Receive out of the Father's rich provisions. There is no lack with him. There is no scarcity with him. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call every need supplied. In the name of Jesus. Angels are ministering spirits. They are sent for to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. And now that you are an heir of salvation, you are entitled to angelic ministration. In the name of Jesus, go forth ministering spirits. Cause the resources to come. Cause the material resources to come. Cause the technical resources to come. Cause the financial resources to come. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you because it is done. Thank you, Father, because it is done. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We believe we receive. We believe we receive. Out of the Father's rich provisions of grace, we receive in Jesus' mighty name. We receive every material need. We receive every technical resource. We receive every financial resource. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless bless you. In Jesus mighty name we pray and believe. Hallelujah. We'll be taking time to pray in the spirit. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14 and 15. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Verse 15. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. I will also read Jude 20. I'm reading in Amplified Translation. But you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice, higher and higher. Praying in the Holy Spirit. So we have seen praying in the Spirit. We pray in the Spirit. We pray in understanding. And every time we are praying in the Spirit, we are speaking mysteries. Praying in the Spirit is a realm where we pray a prayer which cannot suffer satanic interferences. He doesn't know what you are talking about. We too, we don't know what you are talking about. But the Holy Spirit is giving us the utterance and it strengthens us. It builds us up. We become stronger and stronger. We are rising higher and higher. Therefore, we'll be taking time. We have prayed with understanding. Now we want to pray in the Spirit. This is the perfect prayer. Rema shika ndarababa ba, rema shika yeda reba sokondo roboka, ma kanda raba sete rebe kanda rababa ba, rema shika yeda reba soto roboka, me kupari ma sota rima sekende rebeka, rikanda rima soto robosi, rekanda yenda rima soko robosi kanda rababa, rida rima soto roboka, rekende rekende rebe si di mosi kanda rababa, rekende reba si kare bobosi kanda rababa ba, ma kanda and the so called Roboka. Rema sika, robo bobo bobo sika, yena re mama shonde robo bobo. Rikindi ri bobo shika, na raba saka na bobo sende re beka. Rikanda raba basa, na raba konde robo sika, na raba ba. Rekanda raba ba, robo sa. Rikindi ri bobo bobo shika raba ba. Rokonde robo saka, yena na mama sende ri bose kanda ba. Rima shika na raba ba ba. Reba sa, robo bobo sha. Rekanda raba, robo se. Rikanda ra, rokonde rima kanda rima. Matoro, Rikanda Raba Sekene Mosokanamas, Maka Rimakanda Raba Kandimosika Araba Konda Rebaka, Rikanda Raba Kanda Raba was Kandaba Sekende Rebek Reka, Ruk Rakaskanda Baskanda Boboskanda, Makanaba Kandibo Kandaba Sikanda Rababa, Rikanda Rababa, Rokondo Robos Kandarababa Kandibos Kandarababa, Rima Sekanda Rababa, Robo Shika, Rikandara, Robosa, Rima. Say, Rekandurubo Sikendebeka, 
Remaso, Ribaskanda Rababa, Remase Kayeda Rebaka, Meku Parimaso, Robosi Kanda Ramase, Mekinda Rimase Terebeka, Matira Basoko Romosika de Maseka Matson de Roboka, Rikanda Rabase Kandaba Konda Robose Kandarababa, Rikanda Rabasende Rebasi Kandarababa, Remashika, Robosa, Rikandara, O Rababash, O Rabase Kandara, Robosi. Rema sende Rebeka, Meda Rabasoko, Rikanda Rababase, Rekanda Ramase, Robo Sida Masende Rebeka, Manda Rabase Kende Rebeka, Manda Rabakuta Rimase, Robo Si, Rimase, Rokondo Robo Sikanda Rababa, Manda Rimase, Ho Rabaka, Rabasa, Rebaso, Kondo Roboka, Rikanda Raba, Kanda Rabase Kende Rebeka, Rimase Kayeda Reba. Manda Rabaso de Roboka, Rika, Robo, Sikayena Remaso, Rimana Rabaseke de Rebeka, Makanda Rimase, Rima Shikayena Rebaka, Manda Rabaso, Rima Shikandara, Robo Sikanda Rabasi, Mekura Masika Yena Remaso to Roboka. Oh Raba, Rikanda Rababa, Mana Mason de Roboka, Rekandara, Robo Sida Rababa, Manda Rabasi Kende Rebeka, Rima Shikanda Rababa, Oh Glory Maka, Rikanda Rababa, Robo Si, Ribasi, Rimaka, Robo Se, Rekae, Ruba Shikanda Rababa, Rima Sekende Rebeka, Rima Shonda Roboka, Robo Bose de Rebeka, Manda Rabase, Robo Shikanda. Father, we bless your name. Oh, Rababasha, Rima Shikanda Raba, Robo Sika, Rikanda Rababa, Rima Sonda Roboka, Reba Shede Rebekanda Rababa, Rema Shindi Riboka, Manda Rabaso Konda Roboka. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory. Thank you. You for the victory. Thank you for your blessings. They are real in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the agenda of increase. It is real. It is manifesting in my life. Every realm in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I'm walking the realm of increase in every area of my life. My increase is unstoppable. Robo Robo Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I believe you are blessed by this ministry through the ministration of God's word. And you too can be a blessing to this ministry, Ambassador Chapel, by giving offering to support the spreading of the true gospel of Christ through this ministry. And you can use the following details below to give towards supporting this ministry. And the Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' name.